two years ago, I asked my daughter if she wanted to join me at an open house of the University of Aruba, where I am the provost. I told her that she would get a taste of what we have to offer in education, so she could maybe form her choices for the future. She flatly declined to go with me. When I asked her why, she said, you don't offer what I want to learn. This is shocking. So when I asked her, okay, so tell me, what do you want to learn? She actually then at that moment passed a piece of paper in front of me. And you can see the picture up here on the screen in which she had a mind map of what she wanted to learn, how she saw her future. This really stuck with me and it made me start to reflect. Start to reflect on how my children are experiencing learning and also education. And I cross-referenced that with my own experiences and observations. I started realizing that my kids actually learned to speak, learn different languages, and learn a lot of other stuff before they were taught. So I started looking at how that goes, and I noticed that my daughter is learning French by changing the language on her iPhone. So this makes me realize and think back about the core of education. What is in the core of education? It is to bring forth, actually to provoke your creativity. It makes me wonder why we don't ask our children what they want to learn when we design education for them. Then I started looking around the world, how are people thinking about this? What is it that we are observing in the world of learning? And I came upon these wonderful speakers. I would suggest you once visit the TED site and watch their talks. And the interesting thing was what they are saying and observing coincides with what I'm observing. So as the provost of the University of Aruba, I then started to think about and, and, and also investigate how universities around the world are dealing with this. And I noticed that all universities are scared. They are scared of something that is changing in the environment, and they think that their model, the way they function, may not be viable in the future. It's 10 to 15 years. This is a thousand year old model. What is scary then? I thought, let's just think about what universities have been doing for the past thousand years. I say that they were functioning according to a model that I want to call the, chess, the treasure chest model. What does this entail? is that the university would become, would operate as a treasure chest. And that means that they would accumulate the bright minds around the world and they would connect them, bring them into the walls of the university and they would protect them as their own. And then they would offer what these bright minds were capable of offering by bringing in young students. If you wanted to have access to these bright minds, you had to come to that treasure chest and jump in it. So they were accumulating all of this knowledge, and this did have a good effect in the sense that it built an academic community. An academic community is a place where you can say it's a safe haven for critical thinking. It is also a place where people meet and you have a meeting of minds where people learn and educate. The interesting thing about the treasure chest is that after that they started sharing their ideas through print. So if you wanted to know what another university was producing, you had to collect it within your own treasure chest what the other university was actually printing. So you had to move a lot of physical objects around, create these large buildings, the library. Also, the university would become a place 
where you would get a gathering of all of these professors. Interestingly, all of this literature is also a way to capture through time the thinking of those professors that worked at the university. So the university becomes a custodian of knowledge and the consciousness of a society. This is something really great. So why are they afraid? What is scaring them? Well, think about all of those books and think about the following picture in your mind. This gentleman, he hears about this wonderful new book. So he goes into the library looking around for it. This lady comes up to her and asks, are you looking for something? Can I help you? The gentleman says, yeah, I'm looking for a book. So which book? Facebook. <laughs> so the interesting thing is, this shows us that the, what is caring the universities, this is an example of it, is the changing digi digitalization of the world. To think about what that means and what the process is, is I want to bring you to this device, the iPhone. I will use it as an example. The iPhone is a device that if you look at them, they look, all look the same. It's a platform of hardware, and it also has a common operating system. But if you take two iPhones from two individuals and you compare them, you will notice that in functionality, these two iPhones are completely different. And that is because the iPhone also has another feature, which is kind of like an app store, you can call it. And this is a cloud, a platform, through which a lot of other people can design functionality, offer it, and the individual individualizes his own phone. So these two phones, even they look the same, they will be very different. But there is another feature of these new devices that is scary for universities. And especially any organization that follows the model of the treasure chest. And that is that they have become streaming devices. If you recall the first advertisement for the iPhone, do you remember what it was? They said, you have a thousand songs in your pocket. It was still the treasure chest model. But nowadays with my new iPhone, I have 30 million songs streaming through my hand. And not one single song is actually stored in a treasure chest. It's not on my phone. It just streams through. People were liberated from that treasure chest model because of this streaming device. Universities are looking at this and they're changing. They're adapting. But it's more about the content up to now. They want to stream their content to students around the world. In my view, we need to go a step further. So my dream is that the university should change from a treasure chest to a streaming device. And we can do that by designing the university more like a concert hall. A concert hall doesn't accumulate great musicians. It brings them together from around the world where great musicians perform together. They offer a unique experience of very high quality. The audience can come in. And when this performance is over, everybody goes back to their house. To do that, you need a good network that those musicians can connect to each other, know each other, and they can come together. You have a platform for moving people about and musical instruments. But you also need a model of working where you have dynamic groups. You can form a group and dissolve the group again, an ensemble. To be able to remain a university in this model, to remain a custodian of the consciousness and the knowledge of your society, you have to keep on focusing on the great questions of humanity. And also, being the orchestrators synthesizing all of these different actors that come together, those musicians, 
It is also the job of the orchestrator to guarantee quality and integrity. The university's job. Is this possible? Is this viable? The University of Aruba already is moving towards this future. We already offer four different flavors, two from the Netherlands, one from the United States, and another educational model from the European Union, following the Bologna process model. We have synthesized this, harmonized this under our own roofs. Actually, we already work in this fashion for the movement of people and modules, apps. The only thing we are still needing to work a little bit harder on is the technological platform. But this is coming in a year or two to the University of Aruba. By, off, by building, rebuilding the university into a streaming model, you can say that education becomes like Lego. Everybody can use the same pieces, but you actually build something of your own. You can design your own learning track. This can be very fun, like the gentleman on the right shows. Everybody uses the same building blocks, but it is individualized, just like the iPhone. So coming at the end, you need an academic mix to be capable of doing this, you, just like the orchestra hall bringing great people together, but then you can actually design something that is on demand, just in time and tailor-made. By offering people a space where people can come together, make their minds meet, and also be capable of offering that streaming device function, distance learning. How would this work out? Try to imagine education like a fire. They both light up a room, offer comfort. How does the fire light up the room? How does education light up our minds? By giving it fuel. But if you pile the logs too tight, the flames won't be able to breathe. So they won't come up. They won't develop. So you need breathing space. You need air. You only have to, have to add a log every now and then, and the fire finds its own way. It knows how it needs and wants to burn. Why don't we design our education the same way? Offering fuel and breathing space to those that want to learn. Allowing them to learn design their own learning tracks. My kids like to go to school to socialize, to be together. Wouldn't you want to offer them such an education? Wouldn't a university like that be worth working at? Wouldn't you want to attend?